Here we have an iPad Pro 10.5 that came in for no power and the tablet does not charge. Big Boss already did the testing and he said as soon as he plugs in the charging cable, the charging station goes off. It does not show any amps being drawn and it does not show any voltage. The whole screen goes black. Now black screen could be an indication of a short circuit. And uh, right now I do not know if the problem is the charging connector. We already have the board out right here. We have the charging flux cable which is soldered to about 60 to 70 pins from the back or it could be the charging IC, the TriStar chip which is located under this shield right here. So how do we know? Is it the charging cable or is it the chip? The answer is there's no 100% way of knowing if it's the charging connector or if it's the TriStar chip but we can use the testing board for iPads or iPhones and I can plug that board in like this and I can measure all the pins on the board to see if we have a short. If we do have a short I'm gonna start with the charging connector or with the charging flex and if we do not read a short then I'm gonna start with the charging IC but that's not a 100% foolproof method. Just a quick test. So meter in diode mode and I'm gonna point my red probe on number 8 0 0.574, 0 0.755, number 3 should be the same as number 2, 6, 0 0.755 which is the same as number 2, 0 0.755 and we should get the same reading here, 0 0.752. We should get the same reading here, 0 0.752. Now the reading in the middle should be close to the reading on number 1. So here we have 0 0.57 or 574. And here we have 574, the same. Number 4, 0.825. So I'm leaning more towards replacing the TriStar chip and not the charging flex cable. We did not get a short circuit reading anywhere, otherwise I would have started with the charging flex. But like I said, this is not a foolproof method. Just a quick test. Right now we need to desolder the shield that you see here. The shield is soldered on. We cannot just pop out the shield. And the TriStar chip is under here. So let's start, because if we do not start, we're not going to finish. We have to be careful not to burn the battery connector. We have to be careful not to burn the FPC connectors here. I'm going to point hot air only at the shield and nothing else. Not like this, but like this. And the TriStar chip is right over here. This tiny guy right over here. Right next to the battery connector. Great. We have to be careful when we apply heat to desolder and solder that chip. Because we do not want to burn the battery connector. Otherwise, we will have to replace the battery connector as well. And that's more work. So let me completely remove the shield. And maybe we can cover the battery connector like this. With the shield that we just removed. We are safe now, right? Right. Right, right. I ask the question and I answer. Just a minute. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Hi. Uh, I emailed all here uh -huh. about my iPad. I went to uh, Apple. Right, and what I want to do also, I want to cover those chips. And the FEC connector is right here. So we can use another shield like this. I keep those shields on my bench. Better be safe than sorry. You can cause more problems with the iPad if you do not cover up. Is it doable without the shields? Of course. But why take the risk? So pin number one 
is on the bottom right as I have the board oriented. The charging connector is pointing to my body down right here. And pin number one is on the bottom. If I forgot, I can always go back to the video and see. Or what we can do is we can use a silver pen and we can put a dot right here. And that's an indication that pin number one is on the bottom right. Nice and smooth. And look at how many pads we ripped out. Just kidding. Those are not ripped pads. We can remove the shields now. We need to prep the pads before we solder a new chip. And where did we say pin number one was? Right here, right? Right here. Just where you see the 90 degree corner of components. The customer brought in an iPad Air 4 that does not power on. And I gave him a quote for $349. Anytime we are working with those tablets, we do not know what's going on with the board. And it's a lot of technical work. Plus we have to disassemble, reassemble, and that's our price to fix iPad Air 4. He already took it to Apple and they told him it's gonna cost him more than the price of the iPad to fix. So the customer left and then he came back. And he asked if we can do it cheaper. I said we can do it for more money, but we cannot do it cheaper. The customer does not have many options. If he really wants the tablet, he wants the information, it's considered more like data recovery. Otherwise, just go and buy another one. Why bother fix it? It's worth fixing, of course, but mostly people do it for data. They have stuff inside the tablet and buying a new or used one is not going to solve their problem. So that's what always happens. They come in, you give them a price. If the customer is thinking inside the store, I just give him a bag of tea. I tell him, go home, make a cup of tea, think about it, and when you are ready, you can come back. And he tells me, no, no, I want to do it. I said, no, no, just go home. I'm telling the guy to go home, and the guy's like, no, I want to do it. It's like reverse psychology. When you tell him no, go home, think about it, or you do not want to take it in, they demand that you take it in. So the guy came back, and he's asking more questions and if we can do better. I told him no. We can do more, but we cannot do less. That's one thing we do in the shop here. When I give out a price for service, that's the price for service. So we're not selling vegetables here. We're not selling stuff that you can negotiate the price on. Service is different for every person. I may be cheaper or more expensive than others because everybody does things differently. People come in for data recovery. Let's say we charge $600, $700. You go to a data recovery lab and they ask you $3,000. Every customer that comes in, they tell me, he or she, they tell me, that we were quoted $2,700 from another place, or we were quoted $3,000, or we were quoted $1,500. When you give them the $700 price, it's heaven. But for those who do not know, you tell them $700 and they freak out. And you just give them a bag of tea, go home, make a cup of tea, think about it, make some calls, and you can always come back. And then you see the person coming back after one day. Yes, please do it. Is it still 700? No, today we are doing it for 1,000. No, we stick to the price, 700. 
This is specialty work. If it takes us one second to fix it, or it takes us three days to fix it, price is the same. Luckily, we do not have a lot of customers that argue or try to negotiate every single person. They pay even more for the job to be done. A lot of them, actually most of them, they pay for expedited service. They pay for the repair attempt if it's a no fix. They give you more money. Like we had one person that came in and he had another person with him. And he came in to fix an HP Spectre laptop. So I told the customer that we're not going to be able to do it today. There is a long wait to work on your device. So he said, I'll pay whatever it takes. I want it done today by 4 o'clock. I mean, even if we did expedite it, it's not going to be today. But the guy insisted that he want this today. And it's important for him for this to be done today. So I made an exception. I told him, all right, we'll work on it today for an expedited fee. He said, that's not a problem. Just do it by 4 o'clock. The laptop had liquid damage. So I told Big Boss to take it apart. Let's see what's going on. And we took the laptop apart. I worked on it and I fixed the laptop. We called the customer by around 3.30 and we told him his laptop is ready for pickup. And he came in with that same person that he was with and they had a red bag. So I told him the laptop is going to cost him, I think it costed him $349 plus the expedited fee. So more like $475 about that price. So the guy took a full packet of $100. Maybe he had like $10,000 inside that packet and his bag was filled with money. And he said, how much is it? I told him uh, $475. So he started to count hundreds, 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 hundreds. And he gave me a stack of hundreds like this. He said, thank you very much for doing it on time. And he left. So <laughs> I wanted to check the money, if that money is real or not. I needed like five seconds. The guy left. I came inside here. I looked at the money, and the money is real. The guy gave me about $2,000. And <laughs> I cannot explain what happened, but the guy paid $2,000. And to be honest, if you look at that guy when he came in with his gangster buddy, you would think that... These people are coming in for trouble and not to fix or pay you $2,000. You never know. I do not know what they do. I do not care what they do. The guy wanted his laptop fixed. I fixed it on time and he paid that much money. He did not want to hear a thank you or he did not want to see any reactions or anything like this. He just put the money on the bench, on the front desk and he left. So for the most part, customers do not negotiate, especially when customers, they watch the videos on YouTube and they see how stuff are done. They never ever negotiate, but you have that 1% or 2%. But the thing is, when you do not have competition, then negotiation is out of the question. But even if you had stores nearby that does the same type of work, it's service and everyone is different. And why do we have to put up with this glare if we can just turn on our anti-glare light and get rid of it? Let's clean up and we're going to go over this one more time, make sure the pads are nice and flat. And look at this, we have one pad that came off and that pad is in a connect. Those pads are not connecting to anything and the slightest pressure on that pad will send that pad to the ninth dimension. But we do not care about that pad because it's a no connect. Very nice, everything is nice and flat. It does not have to be 100% flat, but for the most part, everything is nice and flat and that's what we want. We are dealing with a microscopic area. This looks big on the screen because we are under a microscope, but the chip itself, I wish I can compare the size of the chip to something I have here. I do not have any coins. Maybe I can compare it to the micro USB connector. That's the charging cable the micro USB connector. It's one third the width of a micro USB connector. Right, is it? 
if we put the micro USB connector down, it's about one third the width of a micro USB connector. So take a look at your micro USB connector and do one third, and that's the size of the chip. That one third width, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six pads. That's how tiny those pads are. Let's apply a tiny bit of flux. We're gonna grab a new chip, solder it, and hopefully that will fix the problem. If not, then we will have to replace the charging flux cable. What can you do, right? Like I said, it's gonna be a hit and miss, but we take an educated guess, and we said there's a good chance that it may be the TriStar chip. We're gonna grab the TriStar chip from here. Those are also sold in our shop, and the same TriStar chip is used for most iPads. The 1610. Do not look at the A3, just the 1610. This chip is used on most iPhones and iPads. You can also buy the original Amtec Flux from our shop. Tweezers, hot air station, soldering station, thermal cameras, grinding pan, braid wig. Whatever we use in the shop here, we carry and sell on our shop. We are out of stock on many things right now, but we have a shipment coming in this week and a shipment coming in by next week. So if you are waiting on a soldering station or a thermal camera or whatever the case may be, just look at our site. If we have it in stock, you can order, check out, and we almost always ship out same day. Let's cover up. And let's do it. So let's align the chip as best as we can. And once we reflow, the chip is gonna align itself. Just hold it for about maybe seven seconds, 10 seconds. Let go, keep holding, keep holding. And now check, is the chip solid? Yes, now we can reflow. We're gonna reflow and then we're gonna tap on that chip from the side. Now you see how the chip may not be 100% aligned. As soon as we reflow that chip, it's gonna align itself. And you'll see. See? And we are done. What if that chip was not soldered on properly? What if you made a mistake? What if it was not aligned to a point where we have to redo it? I mean, all those are options. Nothing is bulletproof. All right, so what happens if we test the connector again, test the values? Just out of curiosity. Zero point five six, zero point five seven, which is more or less like what we read before. I think we read zero point five seven four. Now we are reading zero point five seven two. What about here, 0 0.731? We should get the same over here, 0 0.731, 0 0.797, 576, 731, and we have 731. I think we have a slight difference in reading between before and now. We were reading seven five instead of seven three zero point seven five instead of zero point seven three if i recall correctly now look at this we are reading zero point five eight now on here zero point eight i mean the reading did not change by much but what we can do is use our tristar tester and see if we get a pass or fail we were getting a fail before
Looks like we fixed it. Yes, yes, we have a pass. We have a pass. Pass, 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 pass. You can see as many passes as you want. We did it. Replacing the TriStar chip takes the problem. I'm going to hand the board over to Big Boss to reassemble and test, and maybe we can finish off with Big Boss reassembling the tablet and testing. And I'll be back. Good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Tablet is working. And if we look at the charging rate, five volts. Uh, 2.5 amps. Awesome. It's been plugged in for the past 10 minutes and you can tell it's currently charged at 13%. So it was 0% and now it's 13% and the job is done. Thank you very much Big Boss, boss of all bosses. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.